welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the fourth video in IB Biology Topic 1, Cell Biology, where we will be looking at the concepts of spontaneous generation and endosymbiosis. As mentioned in our second IB Biology Topic 1 video, the cell theory states that cells can only come from pre-existing cells. But like the chicken and the egg, the first cell must have come from somewhere. At one point in time, many individuals believed in the concept of spontaneous generation to explain this phenomenon. This was that life suddenly and spontaneously generated from non-living matter. However, several scientists provided evidence to disprove this concept. As an overview, the timeline begins with Miller and Urey, followed by Reddy, Needham, and finally, Pasteur. Miller and Urey passed steam through methane, hydrogen, and ammonia to mimic Earth's early atmosphere. Then, using electricity to mimic lightning, they found that amino acids and carbon compounds could be formed. They theorised these would then form polymers using energy from deep-sea vents and trigger mechanisms for inheritance before becoming enclosed in a membrane to form a cell. Reddy took three pieces of meat, one which was under a piece of paper, one was left open in air, and one was left under a cheesecloth. He then exposed these pieces of meat to flies and found that no maggots developed on the piece under paper, maggots developed on the piece that was open to the air, and no maggots developed on the piece covered with cheesecloth. But when moving the cheesecloth to a separate piece of meat, maggots developed. He therefore proved that the life was originating from the fly eggs, disproving spontaneous generation. Needham then came along and supported spontaneous generation by showing that a broth heated to boiling point would contain no microorganisms, but if left open to air, would form microorganisms. However, the final say was then given by Pasteur, who disproved spontaneous generation for good. He did this by first showing the air was full of microorganisms. Then, he heated some broth in a flask to kill the microorganisms and left this open to air through a swan neck flask. This prevents the microorganisms from re-entering. He found that nothing was formed. He then broke the swan neck flask and saw that microorganisms developed. In doing so, he proved the microorganisms in the air were responsible for Needham's observations, thus disproving spontaneous generation. The IB syllabus also explores one other form of cell theory. This is known as the endosymbiotic theory, and it explains how eukaryotic cells originated. This theory proposes that some of the organelles found within eukaryotes were once free living prokaryotes. It explains that they were ingested by a larger cell, where they remained and provided a benefit, causing the larger cell to eventually become a eukaryote. The evidence for this theory comes from three distinct similarities between chloroplasts and mitochondria when comparing them to prokaryotes. Chloroplasts and mitochondria reproduce by binary fission, just like prokaryotes. Chloroplasts and mitochondria contain DNA similar to prokaryotes. And finally, chloroplasts and mitochondria have their own 70S ribosomes, just like prokaryotes. It is worth spending some time making sure you understand the experiments and theories behind the origin of cells, as they are commonly topics taught superficially. We hope you enjoyed the fourth video in our IB Biology Topic 1 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website 
to reinforce your understanding from this video.